Hello there everyone, it's Shiny Sparky, and welcome to another tutorial-like video. This one is on how to play iOS games using an MFI controller, which essentially means that you do not have to use the touch base controls that iOS games require you to. The reason why I'm doing this one is because I actually just mentioned in one of my Let's Plays that I'm going to start playing the games that support IM uh, MFI controllers by using these controllers, so I'm pretty sure in the long run I will have a lot of questions as to how I'm doing this, so I figured I should post a tutorial video. Now, you need an MFI controller. There are actually many different types of types of them. Uh, one of them is the Moga Rebel, which is fairly popular. Another one is the Logitech PowerShell, but I am using this one, the Mad Cats CTRL, which is probably not as popular as the other two that I just mentioned, but it is still up there and you know, it's um, it works really well, it really does. So what I'm gonna do is, um, well, obviously take this out, so it's a bit difficult to do it with one hand, though. Yeah. Okay, so once you take out the cover, which actually took me a while, you will see this. This thing, let me go ahead and you know, zoom out a bit. There, that, or move back, I should say. There's a difference between zoom and move, but that's a different story. So, now let me go ahead and, um, well, throw that out there. And this is what it contains. First off, it contains the... Well, the booklet and, you know, like instructions and stuff. The stuff that pretty, that pretty much nobody reads nowadays. And then, there's this. First things first, there is this part. Which, um, this actually hooks up to the top of the controller, kind of. It's basically to hold your eye device in place. And then this thing, the actual controller... Well, well, it has these things here. Hold on. It's like protection for the pads. There we go, take them out. This is the controller. Kind of resembles a um, the Wii U Pro Controller or the Xbox 360 controller. You know, that very bulky kind of shape. Overall, it's a pretty nice controller. It really is. It feels nice. It has, you know, the bumpers and triggers. This is not a button. You will see what that's for. A pad. Um, two sticks, like I said, in the middle. And that's pretty much it. So, there is also... Yeah, there are batteries here. Let me go ahead and uh, take them out. Two batteries here, so the back, you can pop that open, and there's a there's a mini USB port right there, you can probably see, um, it's a bit blurry though, the camera has a hard time detecting it that close, I'm not really sure what the USB port is for, but that's a mini USB, right? Should be. And now the batteries, so I'm going to go ahead and put them on. Okay, now that they're in, and yes they are, yeah they are, they're in well. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this cover back on, so, sorry, it's always a bit difficult to do this while holding the camera with the other hand. Now, it's on. So, what can you do now? Well, it's pretty simple. What we have to do is actually press the, uh, which button is it? Wait, I'm trying to find it here. Is it, oh, it's up the, damn it, oh, there it is. This thing, we got to slide it to the right side, and that basically powers on the controller. It starts to light up. Yep, there we go. And now, now the next thing that you do is, no, you gotta press this one up here, sorry. Press this one for like three seconds, or maybe five seconds, and it lights up a bit more. That means that you turned on the Bluetooth, because this, this does work with Bluetooth. What you wanna do next is then get your iDevice. This is an iPod Touch 5th generation. It's compatible with it. So, what you wanna do is then go to, well, you know, the settings, and uh, Go to, let me see if I remember this, where is it, well Bluetooth right here, and then enable Bluetooth, simply tap it on. Then it will appear, as you can see, sorry it's blurry, I'm trying to, oh there we go, it adjusted, mobile phone and Madcat CTRL, go ahead and tap the top one, once you do that, after a little bit of time, don't worry, it will eventually link up, or maybe I have to press it again on the controller. I probably should. Oh, no, there we go. It worked. Connection unsuccessful. Oh, yeah, I need to... Hold on. No more. Okay, now it says connected, though. That's a bit That's a bit strange. Maybe it was unsuccessful at first, and, but now it does work. Yeah, here it is. It says player one now. Um, you can use four controllers up to the same device if, it's, if you're playing a multiplayer game. But there it is. It says connected, and it seems to have worked. Yeah. Okay. 
So now what you want to do is then, well, launch a game. A game that's compatible. I, I currently have one. Sadly, the world of Magic is not compatible with MFI controllers. I wish it was. I really wish it was. But I'm going to go ahead and tap on Oceanhorn. Because this is a game that's uh, compatible. I'm going to go ahead and play or place the thing right there. And the controller right here. Look at this. Move down, and as you can see, things are popping up. Now I'm going to go ahead and press. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the A button to advance. There we go. And it's going to work. Okay, if it's a bit blurry, I'm going to try to focus it on the game, but... Oh, man. All right. As you can see, it works perfectly. Controls are much better than touch base because you have the option of doing whatever you want. Every button pretty much does something different. Like, for example, what the hell? Why? No, not that one. That one attacks. The X button. So does that one. The B. I don't have the other options like equipment on this game, but... Yeah, um, pause, brings up this menu. You can obviously scroll through everything. Let me go ahead and zoom in now. I will zoom down so I can show you that, you know, it's working, the controls. But yeah, it's a compatible game. So it works. Now, there is one other thing that you can do. Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, the next thing you can do is actually take out the top. This part right up here, you can actually turn it this way. So it will get unscrewed. Yeah, the game's still in the background if you hear the music. It gets unscrewed. Let me just go ahead and set it down. It's a lot easier like this. And this basically reveals a thing right there. So what is this for? This other object, um, you simply want to grab it. Let me go ahead and move this device over here. You simply want to place it like that. It's kind of difficult, but line it up like this. Okay. There it is. Sorry about all these cuts. Again, it's just because I have to use two hands to do many of these things. But there it is. Now it's screwed. And this will not come up. Next thing you can do is then place your device on it. So, you can simply grab it like this. And then you want to pull the top of it. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Yes, I can. There we go. Now it's in place. So, you can basically move around everywhere. See what I'm doing? And I can play. Obviously, it looks a bit awkward because I'm only playing with one hand. But... You get the idea. It works perfectly. Now, as far as one other thing I can do is, well, let me go ahead and show you. Okay, this next part is pretty amazing, actually. Pretty amazing. What you need is this thing, which I have already talked about in the past. It's the Lightning to, Di to Digital AV Adapter. And it's basically so you can output from a device, such as this, the iPod Touch, or an iPhone, or whatever. Um, so you can output it, output it to anything else you want. Usually, I... Oh... Oh man, that is dangerous. Usually, um, I output it to a capture card, but take a look at this. If I put the device, I'm going to go ahead and flip it. It's easier this way. If I place the device there, and then I get this thing and connect it. All right, there it is. And then I get an HDMI cable. I will show you the other end of this port. Okay, there it is. iPod Touch with the adapter on it with an HDMI cable output. So, this cable actually goes towards the back of the Elgato, and if you're wondering what, is, what this is, I have another video on how I record these things using this capture, this capture card, how I record iPod Touch, iPhone, or iPad. Then it's outputting from the Elgato into this TV right here, and there it is, the entire screen. So, let me go ahead and zoom out. Over here is the recording side of this device, and over here, it's on the TV. The reason why I can't play off of this screen is because there's lag, but this one is lag free. Now, if I get the controller right over here, and because this screen is too small, I can simply use the TV and basically move around with no lag, as you can see. Everywhere I move, character moves right away. So it's pretty amazing, but basically, um, this whole combination is basically saying that iOS gaming, you can now play it like a normal console game. You have a controller and you go all the way to the TV and you play off the TV. It's a pretty amazing thing. Oh, they were finally focused. It was a bit blurry in the TV there. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing invention, all of this combined. So, that's pretty much all there is. And yeah, I can do all that while still recording. Simply tap on record right over there. Record it while I'm playing an iOS game like this on the television. So... That's all there is for that. Um, hopefully you found this interesting or 
you know, informative, whatever. So yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye, everybody, and until next time.